welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be having a look at the Antonov AN2, which is currently only $9.99 on the marketplace, uh, which is an incredible value. You get uh, basically four variants. This one here, which I would consider the classic. You get a float, a ski, and then a version that's also equipped with the Garmin GNS 53430 combo. Uh, there's plenty of liveries as well. And this has been done to a very high quality standard. You can see that the textures are fantastic, that the wear is appropriate, the you know marks and clear coats and everything on it just looks really, really well done. Um, there's a very high level of attention to detail uh, on both the inside and the outside. Uh, you can see even on areas of like where the exhaust has been hitting the aircraft, the uh, clear coat has started to come away from it. Um, it's just a brilliant looking uh, design and aircraft. Now the Antov, Antonov AN2 also holds uh, a couple of records. It was the largest single engine biplane that was ever developed, or I should say in production. Uh, I don't know if there was another one that was developed, but this one, it went into production for 45 years, which is also uh, getting close to another record as well. So uh, very historical aircraft. Um, I am very glad that it is in here and it is also a blast to fly. So let's go ahead and jump on into the cockpit and get things started. Inside is much of the same as the outside where it's just done to a very, very high standard. The textures are fantastic. They're very high resolution, so you can get in as close as you want, and they are still, you know, crisp and easy to read, but yet the wear is done uh, appropriately, and everything just looks great. Now, one thing I noticed right away is that I cannot read any of the uh, toggle switches, placards, dials, anything in this aircraft, because I can only read English. So... Uh, this is one of the only uh, times I put on tooltips, which uh, for me is an absolute must to really have it translate the different switches for me. This also requires a pretty in-depth startup, and it has a lot of functionality, which again, I can't believe that this is only $10 when it has this much attention to detail and functionality. So we are going to be using... Uh, the checklist to go through and get things fired up. And we're going to start with the before starting engine checklist. To make the startup a little bit easier for myself and a little more visually appealing for you, I'm just going to follow the checklist on my phone and that way you can see what I'm clicking on a lot better than having, say, something up on, on the window here. The checklist in-game uh, does a very good job of following you through and you can always click on like the little eyeball button and it'll show you which switch it's referring to. So step one is just going to be making sure that our flight controls are free and clear. Everything feels good. Our attitude indicator, we want to make sure that it is caged to both sides are. We can go ahead and pop on our battery switch and pop on our comm as well. Fuel shutoff valve can come to open. Our pneumatic valve also to open and check to make sure that we are not at zero, which we're not. Our parking brake then can be popped on. And our fuel selector needs to be on both. And then from here, we can go ahead and pop on our beacon. This is our sort of exterior light panel. So we'll pop on our beacon. Anti-fire system. Uh, needs to come on. Then our engine parameters, power there, and then also our fuel level indicator power needs to come on. And then we just need to check to make sure that we do have fuel and that that is also reading from both tanks. So all good there. That is before engine start, starting ch engine checklist complete. Let's go on over to get this thing fired up. Uh, so starting engine checklist it will be prop full forward. Mixture needs to come full forward as well. And then our manual fuel pump, which is here. We need to give that about three to four pumps. We do have a primer back here, which you can prime. 
and then we need to make sure that we are clear and we are go ahead and open up that window and we get our magnetos over um to both clear prop and from there the starting on this we have to hit our uh sort of main starter toggle there and then the way this works is that you have to hold this over to basically spin it up until um you get below 80 here once it's below 80 you can then engage the clutch and it will uh fire up so you can go ahead and hold that when you have the tool tips on you can see that it does count up to 100 percent. but if you watch that dial 100 percent will be right at 80 as well there we go and then we can click it over and engage the clutch and there we go we want to get a little bit of throttle in we get up to between seven and eight hundred rpms now i have found on this aircraft that if you want your oil pressure temperature to be correct um coming up to 800 rpms is not going to get you in the green if you did a run up it probably would uh but just doing a startup your cylinder head temperature will be fine but uh, the oil pressure will not be in the green. It'll be just below it. Um, we want to check the oil pressure right away, though, and we are above three, which is uh, where we want to be. Um, so that is starting engine checklist complete. After starting engine, we kind of just went over some of that with the oil pressure. Uh, the starter master can come to off, and then we can go ahead and click on our alternator. And then our... Uh, power inverter here up is main down is auxiliary we'll just go ahead and pop it onto the main and so that is after starting engine checklist complete now on the side here we do have a sort of nav and com uh i don't want to call it a stack but we we've got our radios there we also have our transponder over here uh, we're just going to be doing a VFR flight, so if we just set that to one, two, uh, zero, zero, and on this here, it would be, I think it's on A is for, actually, I think it's B is uh, the altimeter, uh, the alt mode on the transponder. Uh, something cool just to point out, literally cool is that we do have the ability to turn these fans on which um, at first i didn't think that you could until uh i discovered those two little switches so i think that's great that they've even got that modeled in there um the other thing i want to show you is how cool the lighting is in this so let's go ahead and just pop on um all our cabin lighting here and i think that's all of it for now yep yeah. So I'm just going to adjust the time and each one of these lights you can position and it does reflect where you're aiming it. So you have quite a few of them as well. So um, actually those ones aren't on. I didn't turn those on somewhere, but uh, those work fantastic and it's really cool that you have that interaction with it so that way you can set it where you want so very awesome and then just how cool does this dash look with the uh dials in the blue light and everything it's just uh very very well done let's go ahead and come back to uh pick it around i don't know five o'clock all right so our uh before taxi checklist is going to be uh Get the ATC clearance, which we're not needing. We are just at a uh, uncontrolled airport here. We at, we're at uh, Sellets Bay in Oregon. We're going to be flying up the coast to Astoria. We do have live weather on, so that's going to make things probably a little interesting with the tail dragger because that's always um, <laughs> you know a little challenging there. Uh, so we want our carb heat uh, cold. And then uh, these are all our uh, comms here. And then this is all our power for things like our trim flaps and uh, also our cow flaps and oil shutter valves. So all of those need to come on. Uh, 
warning light can stay off panel lights that's that was the one that i was missing for these lights uh we can pop those on and then these are all our uh we don't want the radio on though uh all our sort of like com powers as well so we've got all of that turned on we can go ahead and get our um nav lights on and get our taxi lights on here there we go um and then altimeter we can just hit the shortcut b to set our altimeter here and the gyros need to be set in this there's a shortcut key of d for delta that'll get that set and then you also have these guys here which if you want to you can hold down this for the um, heading indicator to uh, align except i don't have the power on for those we need those on uh, oil shutters. There we go. We got all of that on now. Uh, so if you hold that down, that'll align to the uh, correct heading as well. And we're not going to get into navigating with this aircraft. We're just going to be doing a nice VFR flight. But you have one here on the left hand side and also one on the uh, right hand side, which you could do this too as well. But we'll just get this one squared up. There we go. Um, and from here we just want to check those engine parameters and like i said like our our cylinder head temperature is great pressure is great uh but our oil temp is not um if we were to let this sit closer to um you know 11 1200 rpms that will slowly build up you can see it rising there we just need to be careful of that cylinder head temperature as that happens and during a run-up you would uh I think take it up to as much as 1700 RPMs. Um, and that would definitely get you uh, to where you need to be on the oil uh, temp. So we are good to go to taxi. We lights are on. Uh, pedo heat, we can go ahead and pop that on. I don't think it'll be needed, but uh, pedo heat is here in the middle. And then we'll test our brakes. We can go ahead and just bring that down now. We're probably just about in the green. Yeah, just about. Um, and so we're going to take off our parking brake here. Test those brakes. That worked out great. And then we're just going to go ahead and taxi on down. All right, so we're just coming up to runway 35 here. We're going to go ahead and hold short and do our before takeoff checklist. Uh, parking brake, uh, we'll you can go ahead and set it. Uh, we need to test our batteries. We're just looking here. Test there. Test there. Everything is good. Then fuel selector. We need to make sure again that we are on both. Altimeter is set. Gyro is set. Elevator trim, we need to actually nose this thing down. So this is a unique trim. It's just like this little button instead of a wheel. And if you hold it forward, we need to go down three degrees, three to five. It does like to take off um, very quickly if you do not have that set. Um, the checklist calls for rudder of uh, three degrees right um i found that it's fine without doing that though flaps we can do zero between 20 degrees uh we're going to be fine on this runway with zero flaps it takes off very quickly uncage our um attitude indicators we want to make sure that our parameters are green you can see that oil temp is still low then our cow flaps we need to make sure are open which unfortunately they are fantastic at locking <laughs> our view some more. So we just visually watch those come up until they stop. There we go. And then your oil shutters need to come open as well. And you have a little gauge there to watch when that comes all the way to the six o'clock position. There we are. And from there, we are pretty much good to go. Nav lights on. We can pop our landing lights on. Um, and we can go ahead and release our parking brake and get on in the air. So let's 
go ahead and taxi on out now takeoff will be with the tail wheel locked which is that guy there it does take off very easily this aircraft and you do not need much speed at all so we'll go full throttle rotate around 80 uh, kilometers an hour 80 to 90 ish that tail is going to come up and we can already rotate There we go, and then we're looking for um, around 150 uh, kilometers per hour to climb out. We're going to go ahead and bring our power back down, and we want our RPMs to be at 2,000. So we'll bring those back to make this guy a little happier after that initial push. And we can go ahead and trim out for our climb. We're not going to go up super high. I think I'm going to take us up to 3,500 feet. We're just going to go up to 1,000 meters and level off. And once we level off, we can get these cowl flaps closed. We can go ahead and close our window, too. There we go. Got to have that even open. Say the sound on this is uh, well done. Uh, especially from the outside, it sounds really good. And inside, you know, when you get the windows open again, slide those and we slide this guy. Oh, yeah, we can slide that one open as well. Yeah, it sounds it sounds good. All right. And it's it's interesting getting used to meters because it seems like you're climbing so slow. Uh, but again, remember it's the three to one sort of ratio there. All right, we can go ahead and start leveling off. I am going to bring the power back a little bit here. This is our VSI here, so we can just trim with that. And then I'm, I am going to get these L flaps closed. We can monitor our attempts. This flies very, very well. The controls when you're going slow feel extremely heavy which you would expect them to. Uh, but once you're at speed, um, it, it, it feels nice. It's responsive. It's still a little heavy, but it's it's uh, uh, responsive. Uh, Turning inbound on the GPS runway 5 approach. Trimmed out uh, very easily, flying along nicely now. And we'll just go ahead and keep on cruising up the coast. Um, like I said, we've got about 80 miles to go. We are battling a headwind, though, so uh, it might take us a little bit longer than I initially anticipated. So we'll just get some glamour shots in, and I'll reconnect uh, when we're flying over sort of like Cannon Beach area, and then again when we are uh, coming into Astoria. Uh, you can just see Cannon Beach um, at our 12 o'clock there. I'm going to go ahead and descend down to uh, 750 meters to get a little bit better view. Uh, this area is actually protected uh, from 2000 to the surface, so I don't want to go too much lower than that. Uh, but we'll go ahead and descend down so we can get a better view. much further to go. A story is just over in here. Uh, so just some uh, 
thoughts about how everything feels, uh, the functionality. Uh, it really is fantastic. It, it trims out so well. Um, I was able to, you know, get the elevator trim set with ease and then just do a little bit of aileron trim to keep us nice and straight and level. And really, it, it, it stayed there. And, you know, we've got a little bit of weather, so the wind is definitely, it's coming at us, but we, we do have uh, some wind. Currently in uh, Astoria, let's bring up the Metar data for that because we are uh, live weather. Let's see. So 310 at uh, 9, uh, which is good for us as well because there's a runway 32, which we'll come in to land on. But some of the other features that I was looking at while, uh, you know, doing the flight is that we do have some windshield de-ice there. Uh, we also have some windshield wipers and heat here as well. So that's nice to see. It's all functional. Um, the, uh, I went over the lights with you on there. The, the radio systems, uh, I'd love to do some ADF navigation with this, but we can also use um, some Pro VORs on here as well. So definitely a capable aircraft for you know flying current charts. And overall, I would just say that uh, this thing is not only great looking, but very, very functional. Uh, and throw in the GNS 530-430 combo, um, and you've got, you, I mean, you can do some really long trips in this. This has been um, about 80 nautical miles, and I've just been in here enjoying myself, and it's been fantastic. So we're going to get prepared. Um, I think we're going to cut the bay um this is the columbia river coming in so we're, we're gonna cut over um we're just gonna kind of circle around the bay and come in and uh check out the airport and we'll probably just do a right traffic in because there's it's not much elevation here but uh, we'll just come in and, and land on runway three two um, So I was going to do a right traffic pattern in, but uh, that would make my uh, base right into the sun. So we're doing a left hand instead. So uh, we're just going to turn on to downwind here in just a moment. And then we're going to come land in on runway 32. And we should have pretty favorable wind coming in. It doesn't seem to be gusting the water. You know, it's a little choppy, but there's no white cap, so I think we're going to be fairly good. Now, this aircraft uh, does require you to go slow to land, so uh, we can go up to 45 um, degrees of flaps, and really, we want to be down underneath that white arc um, and just have it float on down to the ground. So we're just going to go ahead and already start to reduce power, and... Um, We'll get lined up to turn on to final. So we've got, uh, we're, we're on base here, um, trying to keep this airspeed under control. Really, you almost have to come to a uh, full idle in order to get the descent rate and uh, your airspeed to be okay, because otherwise you come in too fast. Now there's also on this um, upper wing this will extend if I, I think it goes by um, your airspeed and pitch that it will pop out a little bit uh, to help. But it does make an incredible thump when that happens. So we're going to go ahead and come full flaps now Try and bring us down a little bit lower. Now, this really just needs a, like just the ever so slightest of like little hover above the runway let those the front wheels touch down uh, tail wheel is locked um, I'll put a link above about landing tail draggers I made a video um, on how to practice and the best way to get a feel for them in flight simulator also if you'd like to see more videos like this please make sure to subscribe to my channel uh, if you liked this video, I would appreciate a little right, thumbs up and then a comment down below as well. Zero. We're about 15 miles southwest to the field at uh, 4,500 feet. We're going to be shooting the GPS runway 5 approach. Any traffic in the area, please advise. 
Down we come. Our speed is looking okay. Those cow flaps open, which always get in the way a little bit. We got plenty of runway. Little bit of a bounce there, not too bad. Got some right rudder going on to help with that wind. Bring that tail down. And we can go ahead and unlock that tail wheel. Bring those flaps up. There's my brakes coming on with that uh, pneumatic pressure. And then we can go ahead and exit. Not too shabby. That was uh, a pretty decent one. Uh, sort of squiggled a little bit, but overall, I'll take it. So is this worth 10 bucks? <laughs> I mean, what isn't worth 10 bucks if you get something this detailed? fun to fly and good to look at so um some pop-up parking brake on here so we don't roll away um it is an absolute joy to fly i haven't flown the 530-430 combo yet or the float or ski but i imagine that is equally as fun uh so definitely go pick it up it's on sale right now for 9.99 i mean just what a bargain um, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, until next time, take care.